Alright guys, we are back in Ruby. And it's been a little while since I've done any, uh, so I apologize if I'm holding you back. Um, Object Oriented Programming 1. So let's get it going here. Um, let's take a look at how they define it. So uh, it looks like a class, they're defining a class, and then this uh, establish the name and the creator, then we end it, and then there's a def description here. Alright, this all looks pretty reasonable. And then we create a, a new language object with the two parameters, name and creator. And then we call our description method. Alright, I think we can do that. Let's see here. Uh, create a class called person in the editor. So, uh, an end. Don't put anything between cl between class person and end just yet. All right. So we're gonna have a class person, and we're going to just end it by the sounds of it. It's an empty class. Initialize class. All right. So this is a method for this class, I believe, and we're not actually doing anything with it yet, so we're going to go ahead and save that. Cool. So let's see here. Give your initialized method a single parameter name. Alright, so we're going to give it parameter name. Close that. And what else are we going to do? We need to set the name. Uh, add name equals name. All right. So, oh, I'm sorry. This actually needs to be within the method, within the class. Uh, that makes more sense. Let's indent properly as well. So let's go ahead and save and continue. Alright, so we're going to create a new person here uh, called Mats, and it's going to be Mats is equal to person, the class we want to create, dot new, a new instance of it, and uh, we want to name it Yuki Iro. Go ahead and save and continue. Whoa, a lot of code all of a sudden. So let's see here. Check out the code and see how some variables start with the cash money, the at, the let, the sells marks as global instance. Alright. So let's see here. Alright, so um, at this point you should probably, unless it's your first programming language, know the difference between local variables and global variables, which is a quick and very brief summary of the difference global you can call in multiple methods while local is a variable that will only work in that specific function slash method depending on what you want to call it and let's see here alright so let's go ahead and continue on alright take a look at the code to the right the variable my variable is inside a class so it's not reachable by the puts method outside of it, but you can fix this using either two global variables mentioned above. So let's see here, class variables. Instead of belonging to instance, not they belong to class. Class variables always start with at. So, like so. Global variables. Alright, so I believe we put this on it. And I don't think this is gonna work. We need to probably put it on both of these right here. There you go. So, because we made it global, um, we were able to get it outside of just that class. Go ahead and add age and profession parameters to the initialize method. Then set those equal to instance variables in the body of the method. Alright, so we have name, we have age, and we have profession. 
their parameters, and we're just going to set them at age equal to age. And this is basically, if you're familiar with Java, saying this dot name is equal to name. It's just saying that this parameter is the parameter that you're looking for, more or less. I'm sure there's more complex ex explanation, but that's kind of how I look at it. Um, create a class variable at, at people, and you screw count on line 3 and set it equal to 0. So on line 3, create a class variable, so at, at people underscore count, that's our class variable, and we're setting it to 0. Increment people count on line 8. So on line 8, in our initialize method, we want to increment it by what one? Okay, so um, we'll say and that people underscore count equals and that people underscore count plus one. And you could also do plus equals one, but I like doing it this way. And let's see, return people count line thirteen so that our puts so line thirteen. Um, we want to return people count, and then on line 20 it should print out a person and the number of instances, so let's go ahead and save that. So in this case the number of instances is 2, it prints it out, and bam, we're good to go. So let's see here. Most of the syntax should look familiar to you. The raised bit, which we'll cover in future lessons, generates a new record in valid air. If the user tries to create or save an invalid record. All right. Let's go ahead and continue on here. Take a pause this for a second and look at that if you need to. Check out the code editor. We have defined a class, application air, as well as a super bad air class that inherits from application air. Note that we don't define the display air. The method of body server will have access to it. Okay, so to inherit a class, so for instance, the super class would be person, and then child would be, or um, son would be child of, like if the, the super class is father, then dropping down one would maybe be the son, and above maybe father would be a higher super class, which would be maybe grandfather. So if you were to think of it like that, it's like you all come from the person tree, and then you inherit certain things, like maybe you're a man or a woman, or something along those lines. So you don't have to redefine it as long as it takes those parameters, and you can override those at another time. So that's why we can, for super bad air, call uh, display air without having to redefine it. Create an application class in the editor to the right. Create your own class, my app, that inherits from app my, my application. All right, so we're just going to create a class called uh, my app, and inherit is just this application, and don't need to put anything inside your class. All right, and I'll just send it. So let's go ahead and save that. And so this is our my app inheriting the definitionalized method from it. Let's try a more entertaining, if less realistic, example. Create a new class dragon. All right, so class dragon that inherits from creature. Make sure it's still dragon, right? Give your derived class a fight method that overrides creatures. All right. So I believe all we have to do is uh, define it. And it this should override it just by the definition of what it is we're trying to do here. All right. Return. Reads fire. So it will, unless otherwise defined, it should. In this case, we are defining it to say, look, def fight needs their, our function fight needs to re return something different, so we're going to define that. But if we didn't, it would return punch the chops. So let's see. 
correctly. That should work. All right. So return death fight. Punch to the chop. I should return breeze fire. So our class dragon. So let's look at a hint here. Make sure to use return not puts. We inherit it. Class dragon. Let's listen. Oh, this is probably right here. There we go. Got to make sure your composition is correct. Um, add a puts instead of breathing fire as the first line of our dragon's fight method. Puts instead of breathing fire dot dot dot. Place the return statement inside Dragon's definition of fight. With the keyword super. Alright, so we'll do super here. Place the return statement. Nice. Oh. I believe we get rid of this. Let's see what happens there. So yeah, so apparently super overrides it. Um, maybe we don't need that because we don't have any arguments. Check out the code in the editor. See how we're trying to get dragon to inherit from creature and person. We'll get a super class Mitch Mass for class class dragon. Alright, so this doesn't work because they're not from the same thing. They probably have uh, parameters, I'm guessing, that interfere with each other. Create a class called message and give it an initialized method. Alright, so call class message and we'll define initial. Initialize uh, takes two parameters uh, from and to. Um, let's see here. And then we need to say add from equals from, add to equals to, and then we need to, to end it and end it. So, pretty, pretty straightforward so far. Give your message class a add at message class variable and set it equal to zero in the body of your initialized method. Alright, so add at messages sent equals zero and Set it equal to zero in the body of your initialize. Increment this value by one so that each time a new message object is created, message. All right, so we're going to initially set it at zero, and then I believe we do it outside of here. So we'll do add at messages set equals add at messages set plus one. I could be wrong though. Let me see here. No. Us a G E S percent. So let's go ahead and just copy and paste this in here. Oops. Copy. See if this does it for us. 
Oh, there we go. Um, we actually needed to find it in the class. That's what I was trying to do when I incremented it. But instead, when we initialize it is where we increase it. Within the class is where we create it. So I'm going to stick to this. So now it should work. There we go. After your class, create a variable called my message. My message equals new. Uh, equals message dot new. And we'll say from. We'll make a string from Dylan, and we'll send it to my girlfriend. And store the result and it's from my message. All right, so that should be good. So uh, we're not doing anything with it yet, but we did create the object itself. Create a second class called email. So class email. Uh, that inherits from message, so we're taking some stuff from message and give it its own initialize. So we're going to say def initialize and just takes one parameter subject. So we're going to be overriding uh, the initialize and we're going to set at subject equal to subject and then we need to end it. And then we also need to hit. Bam! So good, we've inherited from our superclass. And to finish this up, go ahead and remove the subject parameter and put an at subject instance variable from email. Go ahead and remove the subject parameter. So, alright, we want to remove that. I'm a little confused. So, Email class, and it should take one, two, to finish pass emails initialized method the same two parameters pass. and add the super keywords only line encoding the body's email initialized method. All right, so this is supposed to be super. Did you change the email to accept two parameters from and two? All right, so one, one, two. I don't know why you would need to do the super there. You should just be able to inherit it itself. But all in all, uh, that was our first object-oriented uh, example on Ruby. So not too bad. Um, let's see what we're working on next. It looks like we'll be building uh, a username and password thing. So something a little bit more relevant. Um, and I'll see you guys next video. And as always, comments, questions, concerns, anything constructive is always welcome.